Hi, welcome to Dreamcatcher. I'm your host, Robin Harden. This is a program where people share their dreams, and by sharing their dreams, they and those like you who hear their dreams receive peace through understanding. We seek Holy Spirit for their interpretation. Today's program is pretty heavy. We address family issues ranging from the divorce and separation to the suicide of a son. I know that you'll be touched by today's show. I have a viewer dream today that she's a viewer from Facebook and she lives in another part of, of the country. And her and her husband are separated. They're not divorced, but um, there's some issues going on. And she dreamt that he came home she said to what she thought was their house. She didn't know he was home, so she was surprised by it, but it wasn't a house that she recognizes. And um, she said in the dream, she wasn't physically ready for him to be home. And he seemed to be leaving for work and she was following him and it was like he was uh, running. And then I don't know if it was the same night or not, but she had a second dream that she's in a courtroom and the judge says to her, 28 years. And so she says, please, uh, if you could help me understand what God is trying to say to me. Many times, as you know, in a dream, a house represents the person. Well, I'm not sure in this dream whose house this is. Is this the husband's house? Is this the wife's house? Because they're married, I tend to think it's their home together, even though she doesn't recognize the home. And he's come back because remember in real life they're at least estranged. I'm not sure if they're living in the same home or not. The Lord is showing both of them that some changes need to be made and we know that because the house is different. She even said in the dream she wasn't ready for him to come and he's running. I think the Lord is trying to say to her and to her husband that there are changes that both of them need to make in order for this reconciliation to last. We know God wants marriages to last. He is the one who came up with the whole idea of a covenant, of a marriage. But we have a free choice. We have a free will. We have to allow the husband to make the choices he has to make, and he has to allow the wife to make the choices she has to make. We also have to allow God to help us to make those changes. Now in the other dream, the judge is God. God is the only true, just God. That's what the Word says. And we also know that a day to the Lord is, could be a year, could be ten years to us. We don't know. His time limits and His time uh, schedules are so different than ours. It could be that He's saying in 28 days you're going to see a change. He could be saying he wants this marriage to last another 28 years. This is a mystery. This is something the Lord is saying to this dream catcher. And I would suggest to her and to you if you're having dreams that you just can't find, what is he saying? He doesn't reveal everything to me. Not everything is for me. Seek his face. Find out what it is he's saying about this. We know his word is that he wants man and wife to be one. He is the one who made the covenant. We also know that He gives us a free will. So pray, ask the Lord to make you want to change. And not just your husband, but you as well. God is not a man that so He could lie. He's not human, so He can't change His mind. Has He ever spoken and failed to act? Has He ever promised and not carried it through? No, 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 never. He, he speaks through the Bible. He speaks through dreams and visions. He speaks through prophetic words. He'll speak to you in your ear. He's speaking to us. The creator of everything is speaking to us. Think of that. I mean, you know, you're kind of excited when your boss actually knows your name. You know, with MTV, it became so big that, you know, you had so many bosses that they didn't know. They wouldn't have known me if I walked in and shook his hand. He wouldn't know who I was. But the creator of him yes. knows my name, yes. and he knows your name, and he knows what he has for you, and he talks to you, he whispers in your ear as you sleep at night. 
You're watching Dreamcatcher, and I'm here with my guest today, Patty. She has a ministry card, Firefly, that's real dear to her heart. It'll be dear to your heart when you hear this. Well, in August 2011, I came home from work one day and found that my 17-year-old son had taken his life. Uh, that day changed my life forever, and life as I knew it didn't exist sure. any longer. Uh, I went through a time and season of grief that I can't even describe. Uh, no parent should ever lose a child, mm -hmm. and, and a parent that buries a child is, there is no grief like it. But God is so merciful, and He's so gracious, and He's so full of love for us, and He helps us through uh, our deepest, darkest times. Yes. Amen. And I rented a cabin six months, um, for six months in West Tennessee, and just spent six months crying out to the Lord and, and really seeking God's face and, and trying to figure out where do I go from here. Um, how do I even find joy or happiness again? I couldn't even imagine laughing or being happy because I, uh, I couldn't even see life uh, as joyful mm -hmm. anymore. Uh, and also I'd led my children to the Lord, uh, brought my kids up in church, my boys, I had three boys and all my boys were you know, just love the Lord. And, and Connor, my 17-year-old especially, I would pray with him, and I knew that he was struggling, and I was taking him to counseling, and he seemed to be, be doing better, but even the counselor said he's doing much better. Uh, but then the day I came in and found that he'd hung himself, oh, it just, my world was so shattered. And I myself had often heard a person that takes their life that they go to hell. Mm -hmm. That's what we're taught in the that's church. Right. That that's what we're we're told. And I really struggle with that. And I wrestle with that. Yeah. For these six months, I was in this cabin. And I I said, God, you've got to give me something here. I've I've got to know that my son is with you because I I've been an intercessor for years. I had a prayer room in my house. I mean, I love the Lord. Talked to my kids about the right. Lord, and knew that what their relationship was. And and um. And when one night I, I, I was in such a, a dark place and I just, I cried, I said, God, you've got to, I need you to give me something. And he answered my prayer. And about four o'clock in the morning, I had a dream slash vision. It was something that I've never experienced in my whole entire life on this earth and have yet to experience. It was so vivid. It was so real. It was as, as if I'm sitting here with you. That's how real it was. And I knew that God was going to, he was speaking to me in the dream, and I knew that he was gonna, going to allow me to see Connor again. Mm -hmm. And he speaks to me in this dream, and he says, Patty, he said, I'm going to let you see Connor one more time. And I was just in the dream, I was like, oh, Oh my God, oh God, thank you, thank you for letting me see my son again. And I was just crying and my heart was just so, oh my God, I can't believe it. That, Lord, you're gonna let me see him. And about that time, my son walks to this doorway and he was standing in the doorway and there was just so much light and beauty emanating from him and so much peace and I, I looked at him and my heart was just melting and he just, the love of God was all around him. He didn't say anything to me, but his eyes spoke to me and his eyes said to me, Mom, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. I'm with the Lord. Wow. And God says to me, he says, Patty, don't worry or fret. Mm -hmm. I've got him. Mm. I've got him. You know, all we want for our children is ultimately yeah. is that they're with the Lord. I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> it was just the most beautiful thing, the gift yes. that, that God gave me. It was so beautiful. And after that, that, that morning I woke up and 
I was unpacking a couple of boxes and when I went to get some things out of this box my hand touched something and I picked it up and it was an old digital recorder I used to use in my company when I lived in Mississippi and it had three messages on it and I started to push delete and all of a sudden I heard don't delete those messages listen and I pushed play and it was my son Connor oh he said mom I love you. I love you, Mom. Not only did God allow me to see him in the dream, he allowed me to hear him. And that, that changed my life forever. It changed me. I knew that the time when I take my last breath here on this earth, I know beyond any shadow of a doubt that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. And I know beyond any shadow of a doubt, the first person that I'm going to see when I enter glory is my beautiful son. Yes. Amen. Amen. I know that beyond any shadow of a doubt. So after that, the Lord began to speak to me. And I one day I was just sitting at this cabin and I said, you know, I can do one or two things with this. I can either lay down and die with mm -hmm. my son and give mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm or I can make it my life's mission to reach this younger generation. And the Lord began to speak to me. He just dropped firefly in my spirit. I was just driving down the road one day and all of a sudden it just, I heard firefly ministries and uh, I said, you know, whoa, where did that mm -hmm, come mm -hmm, from? Mm -hmm. And so when I began to sit down with the Lord, he said to me, he said, I want you to build this ministry on three foundational stones purity, humility, and honor. And within these three foundational stones, I stand as the firefly, the light in the darkness, yes. Jesus, and you are my hands and you are my feet to go to the nations. Beautiful. And that's what the Lord spoke to me. And I said, okay. You know, it's been five years uh, this past August and there's still times, just like when I just talked about that, it's just my yeah. heart because even though I know that I'm going to be with my son for eternity, I still miss my baby. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. It, it's been a process, but I'm so thankful. And God is so wonderful and he's so gracious. And he does speak in dreams. And what a beautiful example of taking beauty and, and giving you beautiful ashes. Yes. I mean, you were in an ash heap of mm. grieving and he took yes. that and gave you beauty. And not mm. just for you, but for mothers like you yes. that are facing or may face or have faced mm. a similar situation that there's hope. Yes, there How is beautiful. always hope. God will never contradict himself. If someone tells you the interpretation of your dream and it doesn't line up with the word of God, you throw it away. God will never contradict himself. So when he talks to you in a dream, in a vision, through a prophetic word, it will line up with his word. God is a God of compassion. He hears our cries. The word says he collects our tears. Even in the darkest of days, God was there for Patty. Through a dream, he answered some questions that she had, and he empowered her. He empowered her to survive the death of a child, and not only survive, but to go out and open doors so other people can be empowered through their devastating situations. The enemy's purpose, we know, in John 10.10, 10, is to rob, kill, and destroy. We know that because God is giving you instruction and guidance and warnings and callings, and the devil doesn't want you to have those. When I was in fourth grade, I actually got invited over to the principal daughter's house. I could not believe that she, could see we moved so much. I didn't know anyone knew me. I was the new kid every year of my life. I never, I hardly even started in the first day of school. I was usually like Christmas time, and here pops this little, skinny, freckled face. I had this crooked smile. <laughs> Here I am, I look like a little country girl. <laughs> we're Appalachian. <laughs> I'm not in the city by any means. A little Appalachian, barefooted thing, and I'm the new kid every year. And I get invited to the principal's daughter's home, and I, we're in this 
like a garage, and I'm going, have I been here before? And she says, I don't think so. I said, well, I had this dream that you and I were playing in a place that looks just like this. And I said, but it was storming in my dream, and the shutters were slamming, and the doors were slamming, and we got scared, and we just laughed. Yeah, tell them my dream, and you know, fourth grade, what, 11 or 12, we go outside and we look at the sky, and in our, you know, all of our wisdom, it's cloud, it's sunny out, it's not gonna rain. It couldn't have been 20 minutes later, the storm came, it was crackling and lightning and thunder and the shutters were slamming and we ran inside, we were scared. And I realized she never asked me back over to her house again because I was afraid of the storm and she was afraid of me because I was weird. I was weird. I knew that we were going to have a storm. And so the, Lord, the devil stole my gift. He shut my mouth and I didn't tell anyone else till I was 48 years old. So from 12 years old, or 11, however age fourth grade is, till I was 48 years old, I did not tell a soul that I could interpret dreams. I want to share that testimony. I call it coming out of the closet. <laughs> I came out of the closet in 2006. I want to share that tomorrow, tomorrow night at your house. But whatever your gift is, it's probably the one thing the devil fights you the hardest with. Because he doesn't want you dancing in church. He doesn't want you helping someone to know what the Lord is saying to them in a dream. He doesn't want you preaching the word of God. Whatever it is, he doesn't want you doing it. So he will make you look stupid. He will make you look foolish. He will make pe people afraid of you. He will, you will be the weirdo. And you know how important it is for us to fit in with peer pressure, and that's not just something that happens in school, you know. Go to the mall and see the grown women all trying to look alike. <laughs> I mean, look at the fashion that we wear. Some of us, I don't think, have mirrors because we all wear the same things, but we don't all have the same body type. <laughs> and I think, do we not have mirrors? Because that does not look good on you. <laughs> Hey there, I have something very exciting I want to share with you. The new Dreamcatcher Journal. It's geared to help you catch your dreams with over 50 scriptures, inspirational words, and revelations, all pointing to dreams and dream interpretation. In the back, there's a quick reference to help you with colors. Maybe you keep waking up at the same time or you have a favorite number that follows you. 44 different time scriptures, I call them, to help you find out what it is the Lord is saying to you straight from the Bible symbols that you can compare your dreams with and find the scripture that might help you interpret your dream in addition there's a hundred and ninety five different symbols from past dream interpretations that will help you to catch your dream order yours today That And I think that pastors and youth pastors are gripped sometimes with fear, and yes. even parents, mm -hmm. that if we talk about these issues, that it will cause these young people mm -hmm. to take their lives, or it will cause them to cut themselves, mm -hmm. when in fact, when you bring awareness to it, when you address these issues, when you talk about these things, lives are saved. Yeah. When you can talk, to, when I go in and I speak to these young people mm -hmm. and I share my story of the empty chair and I tell them what you're thinking in your mind, mm -hmm. this is the reality of it. You're thinking, I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to take my life. This is the after effects. Mm -hmm. What I'm showing you, this empty chair, this is what I'm left with for the rest of my life. You're, you're wanting a permanent answer to a temporary problem. And, and this is reality. So when I go in and I talk to kids at schools, at churches, and they hear my message, it, bring, it shakes them into reality mm -hmm. to say, wow, I don't want to do mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And it also gives me an opportunity when I do, these kids come to me and they say, you know, can you pray for me? I remember I went to this one meeting. I, I had been invited to speak and share about Firefly. And this little 14-year-old girl I mean, if you saw this girl, she was beautiful, just blonde, absolutely gorgeous, precious, just absolutely beautiful. 
And she walks up to me and she says, Miss Harrington, can you pray for me? She said, I've tried to kill myself five times. Mm. And she laid her arms out like this, Robin, to me. And I looked down and it was just like, it was almost like claws yeah. of cuts of cuts on both arms all over she said these are just my arms i've got it all over my legs and and so many misunderstand mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. they think that they're doing it for attention mm -hmm. but what it is is the pain that they're enduring the the trauma the hurts mm -hmm. the losses that they've endured in their lives they're so hurting that it's almost like when they cut themselves, it moves it from here it, yeah, it to here. Mm -hmm. You know, over 60% of our young people are living in single family homes. We're living, in, we're, women are bringing these children up by themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They are, these kids are living in single family households. The fathers are either absent mm -hmm. or they're part time. And so often that these young people get caught up in the drama and the yeah. nonsense of father talking about mother. Oh, I pay your mother child support. She spends that money. She doesn't spend it mm -hmm. on you. And then you've got mother that, you know, is talking to the kids. Your daddy's a sorry piece of dirt and he doesn't do this. Mm -hmm. He doesn't get you. And, and these kids are so just, I mean, they're pulled mm -hmm. back and mm -hmm. forth and back and forth of, mm -hmm. of the trauma and, and the chaos that's going on in their houses you know and God one day he said you know Patty a parent can even bully a child mm. and he began to show me this scenario one day when I was driving down the road and he began to show me these kids and they would get up in the mornings and they would hear the chaos and mm -hmm. the yelling and the screaming and and the, the pressures mm -hmm. from mom that's trying to make a living pay the bills mm -hmm. work in two jobs be being responsible for the three kids that right. she's having to raise by herself and she gets up and she's stressed out she's worn out she's you know mm -hmm. wondering how can I do this today and then the kid comes in there ask her where's my pair of pants and she's a she yells and she mm -hmm. loses it because she's stressed and mm -hmm. you know the child goes back in his room and it's like he's like what I'm like what can I do I can't live like this you know then they get to school and then they're being bullied at yeah. school. And then they, you know, have kids that are picking on them in the lunchroom and they're laughing at them and saying, oh, we don't want you sitting at our table. Right. You know, and then all of a sudden, you know, the teachers and, and they're having to perform academically, yeah. you know, and, and they're making bad grades because they're so stressed and they can't even study. They can't even focus and they're not even putting time and effort and energy into mm -hmm. it because they're so tired yeah. of all the stress. And then they get that and then they get back on the computer at home and they're being cyber bullied. Yeah. And the cyber bullying starts and all the friends and making fun of them. And then here comes the cycle again at home when mom comes home from work and she has to cook dinner for her, her children. And she's thinking, what can I cook for dinner tonight? She's got $35 in the bank. And how am I going to go to the grocery store and buy groceries to put food on these kids tables? And then she's got to come home and do the homework. It's a destructive mm -hmm. cycle. And these kids are caught up in the middle of it. And I thought even that day when the Lord showed me that, I was like, Whew, mm -hmm. you know, wow. But that is a very real picture. And I can guarantee you there's many mothers that just heard that and says, my Lord, you're taking the words right mm -hmm. out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. You're speaking my life. But here in all of these things, that's when we have to step back yes. as God's people to step back and say, you know what, God, I can't do this by mm -hmm. myself. Oh, amen. I cannot raise these children by myself, Lord. I can't do everything by myself. You, God, have got to help me. And this is a time that you have to reach out to the Lord and say, God, I need you. Mm -hmm. I need you, Lord, to help me through this because I can't do it by myself. Mm -mm. I can't do it. I can't be the father. Right. I can't be the mother. 
I can't be the disciplinarian. I can't be the best friend. I can't be the one that makes this thing get up and walk around and pay all the bills mm -hmm. and do everything I need to do. I just want to give up. Right. And sometimes that's what happens. Mm -hmm. And if mom feels like that, what are the children What are the like? children thinking? But that's where we've got to really give everything to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And God in, gave me this scripture with Firefly, and it, it has so resonated with me for so long. He says in Psalm 34, 18, he says, I'm close to the brokenhearted. Yes. And I save those who are crushed in spirit. But, you know, even if you're not going to commit suicide, but even if it's a person that's suffering or struggling, mm -hmm. that the Lord is close. He's right there with you, and He's waiting on you to call upon His name because He says those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved because He's the lover of your soul. He loves you. He adores you. Just think. God brought me through the darkest night of my soul and bearing a child six feet in the ground. Mm -hmm. And I have joy in my life again. I have peace in my life again. Yes, I've gone through the darkest times that any parent could ever even imagine. But God is no respecter of persons. Mm -hmm. What He did for me, He'll do for you. He will do it for you. But you have to call upon His name. And you have to surrender everything to Him. And you have to give Him everything because He loves you and you're His child. Satan tried to destroy Patty with the discovery that her son had taken his own life. But as you can see, God turned that which was meant for evil, God took it and He turned it into good. Perhaps you're facing something that's tragic or devastating. Maybe it's just the confusion of life. I urge you to follow Patty's plea and turn to the one who has the answers. Turn to the Lord. He's there to help you. It's your dreams or your testimonies. And we overcome the, the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. So when you share your testimony, that is people are, people are being blessed. And just hearing yourself say it. Faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. That's why we read the Bible out loud. That's why we pray out loud to bless Him, to bless those around us. But when we hear it, yes. it does something to our physical brain. We know that we're a triune being. We know that we're a soul and a spirit and a body. But our brain is an organ. That's not our spirit. So that organ needs to hear our spirit mm -hmm. praising the Lord. I love your show. I, I know that a lot of people watch it and get information. And he wants you to know what he's saying to you. So if you're having a dream, send me your dreams and, and let me help you to find peace through understanding. Next time on Dreamcatcher, there is quite a variety of dreams. God is delivering messages of instruction through some really diverse dreams and situations. Young Haley is running from a monster. And then Cynthia has a pretty disturbing dream about Donald Trump, of all people. Caleb is dreaming of systematic killing of certain people groups, plus those dreams of driving and speeding tickets. You won't want to miss next week.